Warning, warning. Cradle overdose of element T detected. Await further instruction. Um, Tanhony, sir? What is it? I, uh, I, uh, Can't you see I'm busy these... with business? Sorry, I, I brought you the new designs you asked for. <sighs> Give me those! Uh, what the hell is this shit? I worked really hard on it. This isn't what I asked for. <laughs> Fine. I'm going to go start my own company. <laughs> You'll come back sooner or later, you stupid little employee. After that, Darnell went and started his own company, working on and improving his designs, while Tanhony remained in the Dark Ages. His client was so unimpressed with his work that he fired Tanhony on the spot and instead went to a new design firm, where he immediately on the spot hired him. Three years later, in a parking lot. Tanhony, is that you? I don't know, I, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> it's been a while, good to see you. <laughs> I have a very nice car. How'd you afford that? You're just an employee. <laughs> Actually, I own my own business now. And uh, I'm coming here to buy your old office. You can't... No! <laughs> Moral of the story, a penny saved is a penny earned. Welcome to Discovering SCP. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to discovering Darman. Darman, you be watching about old Darman videos. So, type <laughs> yeah, in Darman on YouTube for any kind of context. <laughs> I am. Um, <laughs> uh, how many SCPs do we have today? We have one, two, three SCPs, and we have a very special theme because I know we it's, have a, um We have a what special? A very special theme. Oh, okay. What's our theme? So, you see, I noticed a comment on our previous episode. So okay. Consider this a preview of the comment readings, because I'm going to read this out now. Okay. <laughs> let me find it, 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 let me find it. <laughs> Candy Queens says, Isn't SCP written by Tanhany other than 5,000 going to be read soon? Because I feel like <laughs> it's been a long time since one has been read. You're absolutely it, right, it, Candy Queens. It has been a long time, but but there was a period of time where it felt like every other episode had Tanhony SCPs in it <laughs> back in the day. Because in his words, there simply weren't any others I could think of but my own. My own SCPs. So what are we reading today in Series 4? Or are we going back in time? Huh, what? Which ones are we asking today? You ask. It's yeah, ringing. are we doing series four or past ones? Series four, my friend. Wait, but you had series one SCPs. It's almost like you've been on the wiki for over a third of your life, or something. Over a third of your life, in total. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. And I always. Wait, that's will. the same thing as you. Hold on, because you're older than me, and it's over a third of your life. No, but it'll always be over... Nine years is always going to be over a third of your life. Are you implying I die at 27? I'm not implying. I'm making it happen. That's sad. I'm going to kill you. So, uh, for those those of you who are wondering, I I got a COVID test today, and I'm going to hear back in a few days. But, um... So, I think Tanhony is threatening me, and I think he gave me the illness on purpose. I... I'm not allowed to say this, but I am the illness. You're the what? It's my, I am the illness. You are coronavirus? It's me. S- Stop it then. Do you know how many people you're hurting? Sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> coronavirus is over after this video. <laughs> <laughs> it was all a misunderstanding. So are you going to link me to the SCP or what? Yeah, sure. The first one we have for today is SCP. Three, one, two, seven, and this one is called Ooh. 19-year-old Jessica Lambert and a female pig of abnormal size forever. Oh, this probably isn't a good article because it was written by you, but... Why don't you shut the fuck it. up and read? <laughs> Holy shit! This was written... <laughs> Wait a minute, aren't you guys in series six now? Yeah. Um, so this was written only two years ago. How fast do the series breeze through? They accelerated. The it was made in heaven. Oh... I see. That makes sense. This was last edited uh, 11 months ago by Dr. Bleep, and no one said why. 
Okay. Cool. All right. So, warning, the file you are reading is an outdated version. Please proceed to update log for current containment procedures in summary. <coughs> so. How about you read them? No, I'll read them. Uh, what? I can read them if you want, but I mean, I just no, thought no, that no, was no. a thing. <coughs> this, these are the only articles you can get, get away with saying Safe because you wrote them, so it could technically be correct. Item number, SCP-3127, object class Euclid. Special containment procedures. <laughs> SCP-3127, currently located at Site 43, is to be contained in a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter chamber and fed twice a day in accordance with nutritional chart 3127-1. I, I so, love it because you told me that like nutritional chart number is your favorite <laughs> thing and now I notice it in like all your articles. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't have to say shit, there's a nutritional chart. <laughs> So lazy, I love it. The SCP's containment chamber is to be kept under guard by two security personnel at all times. The mental health of the SCP is to be monitored by an on-site therapist for ease of containment. SCP-3127 is not to come into contact into physical contact with any personnel outside of testing. So this didn't really give me like any information, but what was the title again? Uh, <clears throat> the title is... 19-year-old uh, something... 19-year-old Jessica Lambert and a female pig of abnormal size. Forever. So I'm guessing this is like a farmer who like was entering a pig contest and had a really big anomalously big pig. And that's the article. That's my guess. I'll find out. Description. SCP-3127 is a 19-year-old woman named Jessica Lambert, a former resident of blank Illinois. Oh, uh, you know the rule. What's, what's that blank? Garben... You don't know any cities in Illinois? No. I, th I, I, I thought that was Gom clearly Gomben. supposed to be Chicago. Gomben. I just told you. Gomben. Okay. SCP-3127 displays no abnormal physical characteristics for an individual of its age and is in sound mental condition, barring minor stress inherent to containment. When the SCP makes physical contact with another human being, that individual adopts the emotional state of SCP-3127 at the time of contact. The affected individual is then unable to feel emotions outside of said state for 20 to 30 minutes. There appears to be no permanent effects to the affected individual after this emotional state fades. SCP-3127 was brought into containment after Foundation agents intercepted communications from the FBI's Unusual Incidents Unit regarding a girl who had contacted them claiming to have psychic powers. Although these reports were dismissed as a common hoax by the UIU, Foundation agents already in the area independently investigated and confirmed these claims, subsequently bringing the SCP into containment. Family and friends in Garmbun were administered Class B amnestics and led to believe the SCP had died in a car accident. I'm gonna shit my pants if there's an actual city in Illinois called Garmbun. Garmbun. You have to say it like that. Garmbun. Like you started to say Garfield and then you have to think of another word halfway through. Garmbun. <laughs> Is that what happened to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Addendum 3127-1. On 11-19-15, approval was given for SCP-3127 to be exposed to a number of other anomalous items for cross-testing purposes. As no unexpected results occurred during these experiments, they have thus been filed as irrelevant materials. Full logs are available upon request from the Site-43 Archive Department. What you know what I just that? realized? If the SCP Foundation existed a couple hundred years ago, they would totally have seen, like, radioactive elements as, as anomalous entities, right? Because they, like, yeah. can... Exposure would, like, distort your body and shit. Oh, that's so cool. Sorry, I don't know why that came up because of this. That just what do you think so far? Uh, I think that this is really bland, so I feel like these update logs are going to go somewhere. And it seems, with all this testing, maybe they're going to keep testing her with other things, and it's going to eventually happen to something, and something crazy is going to happen that they didn't expect. Mm -hmm. Addendum 317-2. On 12-10-16, the SCP reported feeling ill to supervising staff, Af and subsequently gave birth to a live female piglet, despite displaying no signs of pregnancy beforehand. The SCP perished okay, during this process. Hell. Hmm? That's gross as hell. Yeah, it's, that's kind of, kind of weird. SCP perished during this process due to complications arising during emergency surgery. The live piglet, which has also displayed anomalous properties, is currently awaiting classification. I don't know why, but you keep cutting out. This has happened the last few videos we recorded. What is going on? It's called distance and an ocean. I don't like it. Fix it at once. Bring the oceans closer together. <clears throat> well, what's who happens next in this tale? Yes, go for it. Item number, SCP-3127, object class Euclid, uh, it's the same. 
Continue procedures. <laughs> Description. SCP-3127 is a sapient female piglet. The SCP is capable of vocalization using the voice of Jessica Lambert, of whom it claims to have no knowledge. Instead, the SCP claims to be Duchess Isabella III, a British aristocrat from the year 1827. History shows no records of such an individual existing during that time period, suggesting this is a falsehood or delusion on the SCP's part. Any individual who comes into physical contact with the SCP is instantly transformed into a female piglet capable of vocalization in the voice of Jessica Lambert. While in this state, affected individuals claim to have no memory of their previous identity. The state lasts for 50 to 60 minutes, and there appears to be no permanent side effects once affected individuals return to their original form. Very strange. Right. That's weird. There's an addendum. Oh, addendum 1. On 12 16 routine medical analysis of the SCP revealed the presence of a tumorous growth within its brain. Within the next 24 hours, this growth rapidly expanded, bursting out of the SCP's skull and causing its death. The growth then changed its shape into that of 19-year-old Jessica Lambert, changing its biology completely into that of a human being over the course of the next hour. A full update to this file is pending following complete analysis of this new SCP iteration. Okay, wait, so let me let me get... Because a lot of things just happened in a very short time and my brain's very foggy today. So, uh, the pig is dead, but Jessica Lambert came out of the pig. Uh, yeah, a tumor burst out and then turned into Jessica Lambert again. Ew... All right, so we've got the next update log, 102.2017. Yeah. Same, uh, oh, there's a few different um, content procedures uh, just the, at the very end. Uh, the first signs yeah. of illness from the SCP, supervising staff are to prepare for an in- imminent Moccas event. Moccas event? Okay. Description. At the time of writing, the SCP is a humanoid entity with the appearance of a 19-year-old woman identical to the deceased Jessica Lambert. The SCP claims to have no memories or prior knowledge relating to Jessica Lambert, and instead claims to be a pig farmer named Isabella Stanford from the year 1827. Oh, it's like a creepy cycle of rebirth, but like playing telephone with their identity. <laughs> Which begs places... the question, was the original Jessica Lambert even Jessica Lambert? Mm. In place of internal organs, the SCP's body contains a large number of organisms superficially resembling domestic pigs of various shapes and sizes. Despite the fact that analysis has revealed that these organ- or- organisms do not actually function as organs, the SCP has displayed no discomfort or health issues, suggesting it possesses a secondary anomalous effect keeping it alive. When informed of its physical abnormalities, the SCP showed little concern and claimed that its body had always been that way. Furthermore, the SCP does not appear to require food, water, or sleep. Ooh. When the SCP comes into physical contact with another human being, that human being's internal organs are instantly replaced with pig-like organisms identical to those within the SCP's body. This invariably results in the death of the individual making physical contact with the SCP, who does not share it, who, who do not share its secondary anomalous properties. The pig-like organisms that replace the individual's internal organs die two to three minutes later. Due to past incidents involving iterations of the SCP, the SCP is expected to spawn a new anomalous organism before perishing itself in the near future. Henceforth, such occurrences will be referred to as Muckus events. It has also been determined that research staff should conceal this likelihood from the SCP in order to avoid causing it undue mental stress. Addendum 3127. Yeah. <laughs> as expected, on 111 2017, the SCP reported feeling ill in the same manner as the original SCP. Staff accordingly prepared for an imminent Muckus event. An hour later, SCP-3127 orally expelled all the pig-like organisms within her body before subsequently expiring. The pig-like organisms then merged and coalesced together into a female pig of abnormally large size. Full updates to this file is pending following analysis of this new iteration. Alright, now we're on 1-14-2017, right? I'm having trouble keeping up. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. <clears throat> and and item number... And same your... procedures... Right. Yeah, take it Yeah. Oh wait, no, no, this the is a new one. Is a All staff pig. working with it are to wear deafening headwear. Oh yeah. Yes, noise deafening headwear at all times. Security personnel. Yeah, sorry. So the SCP is a sapient female pig of abnormally large size, capable of vocalization in the voice of deceased nineteen-year-old Jessica Lambert, the entity originally designated as SCP-3127. The SCP believes itself to be the corpse of Jessica Lambert, often asserting that it is dead and requesting burial. Ew. Complete. In place of internal organs, the SCP's body contains a large number of organisms resembling miniature versions of Jessica Lambert, all of which are constantly screaming. Despite the analysis has revealed that these organisms do not actually function as organs, it's by no discomfort or health issues, 
When informed of its physical abnormalities, the SCP showed little concern and claimed that, as it is dead, the state of its body is of no concern to it. Furthermore, it does not appear to require food, water, or sleep. Any individual who hears the screaming of SCP-3127's internal organs will instantly come to believe that they too are the corpse of Jessica Lambert, mirroring the SCP's behaviour and requesting burial. There are no known means of reversing the SCP's effects. Due to past incidents, uh, it's expected to undergo a massacre event. <clears throat> Addendum 3127-1 on 1-29-2017, all of the SCP's internal organs attempted a simultaneous escape from its body, emerging from its stomach and killing it in the process. Only one internal organ survived initial annoyance, instead suffering sudden heart failure three minutes later. All other internal organs decomposed into the base material shortly after expiration. The intact organ, over the course of the next three days, expanded in size and changed shape, so as to become a creature resembling a hybrid between a domestic pig and deceased 19-year-old Jessica Lambert. At the end of this process, it spontaneously reanimated and began pacing around the containment chamber. Full update to file pending. Sorry I'm not, like, reacting much, but this one is just, like, a genuine what the fuck. I'm not really sure what to say about it. It's just really bizarre. Nice. So I'm just kind of, like, seeing where it goes, I guess. <laughs> I don't really know how to react to this. It's a number. Euclid. Uh, it's, and now it's to be gagged at all times also. Description. The SCP is a humanoid entity resembling a hybrid between a domestic pig and deceased 19-year-old Jessica Lambert. The SCP appears to be sapient due to expressive hand gestures as made towards staff on several occasions, but is unable to speak due to the fact that it is constantly screaming. Any individual who hears the screaming of the SCP, even if it is muffled or otherwise obscured, will instantly be transformed into a corpse identical to that of 19-year-old Jessica Lambert. Analysis of these corpses has shown that, despite their human appearance, they are genetically identical to domestic pigs. It's weird that this is the second time I've seen that quote-unquote trope in SCP of it, a thing is X animal, but it has the genetics of other thing. Like, how does that even work? It's creepy. It's weird. It basically just has to be magic at that point. Well, people are turning know. into pigs, so... I guess. According to non-verbal interviews conducted with the SCP, it believes itself to be Jessica Lambert, claiming to have been suffering a series of nightmares after the exp expiration of its original body. The SCP apparently has no control over its vocalizations, nevertheless frequently attempting to muffle or otherwise obscure them. The SCP has expressed significant distress at the prospect of further Marcus events and has requested that personnel attempt to prevent them. Research into this is ongoing. Addendum 3127-1. On 2-13-2017, the SCP submitted the following written message to research staff. Why don't you take over for that a little bit? Um... <clears throat> Please read this and really do what it says, okay? Not just say you'll consider it. This is your fault. You said just a few tests with some weird bullshit and nothing happened and now I'm some pig freak and you're just watching and writing it down in your clipboards and fuck you. Fuck you. I'm sorry. Please, please, please do something. I feel like I'm not even me anymore and I'm not e even sure I'm r if I'm wrong about that. Sometimes I forget I'm not a pig. Please help me. As part of an effort to prevent further Marcus events, the SCPs were transferred immediately to Research Installation 33 for extensive testing. So this does seem to go with my theory so far that she was fine, and then they tested her with a bunch of shit, and now she's weird. Hmm. Alright, then we have the final one. Item number, SCP-3127. Object class, Keta. Special Container Procedures. The SCP is currently contained in a soundproof chamber in Containment Bunker 41, located several kilometers away from Site 18. All personnel working with the SCP are to equip with noise cancelling headgear at all times. Any messages originating from the SCP are to be transcribed by observing personnel. Any organisms compromised by the SCP are to be terminated and incinerated in order to prevent their numbers from growing uncontrollable. Researchers are to focus all efforts on preventing further Marcus events. A description. SCP-3127 is the facility formerly known as Research Installation 33 which transformed into a domestic pig of the same size upon the arrival of on 02 2017 of the anomalous entity previously designated as SCP-3127, a 19-year-old woman named Jessica Lambert. Despite its abnormal size, genetic testing has shown no differences between the SCP and a non-anomalous domestic pig. It has shown no need for food, water, or sleep, and does not move unless prompted through physical stimuli. Uh, ever since the moment of its initial appearance, the SCP has been observed to intermittently scream in the voice of Jessica Lambert. Any living animal that hears the SCP's screaming will instantly be transformed into a creature resembling a hybrid between a domestic pig and Jessica Lambert. These creatures appear to have the same level of intelligence as a normal domestic pig and will behave accordingly. 
Analysis of the SCP's screaming patterns has shown that the gap between its vocalizations are consistent and can be translated to Morse code, a method of communication the original SCP had limited knowledge of. Thus far, SCP-3127 has only delivered the following messages through this method. Uh, where am I? Make it stop. Eek. Addendum. Mocus event ongoing. Further updates pending. The end. <laughs> Alright, so... I have to be honest, I... I didn't really like this SCP that much, but let me let me go over what I liked and what I didn't like. Mm. So one thing I liked was I feel like this was cool because I had talked about we haven't seen or at least I haven't noticed too many SCPs where the they, the SCP Foundation created one and they sort of inadvertently did here. And I also think even though it was disturbing, there are parts that you can kind of see that hint, a hint of that Tanhony humor, but uh, the parts around there are a little too disturbing and and ecstatic to keep up with it. What I didn't like is I feel like you had a really interesting idea here. Here, This was originally someone that was barely anomalous normal, and it was the things that they tested them with that fucked them up. But not only would it have been way more interesting to explore like them desperately trying to research and figure out what item did what, but also if it consumed their whole research facility and kept creating a progressively more dangerous SCP, it would have made sense and benefited them to try to do research into those items. Uh, and try to look into more of it. And I feel like it, it. I feel like what this was is it was a great concept, but it wasn't really developed in a way that made it compelling enough. There wasn't enough of the narrative. There was a hint at something more interesting, but it didn't quite get there. And I feel bad oh. saying this because I'm, I'm not trying to insult you, and you know I love your writing, but I have to give this one like a six out of ten. It's definitely probably my least favorite tan work I've read. I see. I see. You're fired. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's my honest opinion. What do you're you the, think? Though, these are your designs. <laughs> I, I like it. I like it this. Though. I feel like this is where like the surreal tan honey period probably came from. To be honest, fair enough. But I feel like I surreal like, tan honey hmm. nowadays has enough. It's. It, I feel like this is more like shock value, you know, rather than just like the that's surreal what? element of like these horrible like creepy genetic things. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being overly harsh, but this is definitely not one of my favorite tan pieces. Uh, but you still have two more to show me, and you have I yet see, to impress me. So how about we try with number two, employee? Oh. Okay. SCP-3179. This one is called The Seed. 3179. All right. What is this image? Ooh. Photograph of partial SCP-3179 breach during attempted transportation. Image taken from Cogwork Orthodoxy Records. Oh, this is Broken God Church? Broken Church? Broken God Church? Yeah. Sorry, I struggled with words there for a minute. <laughs> All right, hopefully hopefully I'll react more to this one. I didn't have too much to say about the last one as it was going on, but I'm, I'm excited for this because I like me some Broken God, so hit me with it. Okay. Item number, SCP-3179. Object class, Keta. Special containment procedures. As transportation of the SCP is not feasible, a containment bunker has been constructed around the object. Mobile Task Force Zeta-10, Death Metal, but to monitor growth of the SCP in several sections of its main body to prevent ex expansion beyond acceptable levels. That is an awesome mobile task force name. <laughs> Any instances of Dash 1 expelled by the SCP are to be eliminated immediately and subsequently analysed. All personnel interacting with the SCP to be thoroughly decontaminated before and after each interaction. In accordance with the Marconi Pact, additional information on the SCP and its history can be gained through contact with Cogwork Orthodoxy Ambassadors. What's the Marconi Pact? Is that something that's specified in other articles or tales? I think it's just something I made for this one. Oh, nice. Alright, let's hear it. Description. SCP-3179 is a liquid metal organism of variable size, capable of expanding oh, wait, wait, wait. its ma- s s Sorry, what's the title of this one? The Seed. Oh, my bad. Sorry, continue. It's a liquid metal organism of variable size, capable of expanding its mass, altering its own form, and creating smaller autonomous entities. Currently, the SCP is inhabiting the interior of a damaged containment unit constructed using quagwork orthodoxy techniques in the year 1917. Records indicate that, in the past, this containment unit in itself displayed anomalous properties aiding it in its task. However, it seems to have become inert over time, now functioning simply as a sturdy container for the SCP. While this unit has been affected for the last 100 years in restraining the SCP's growth, projections suggest that it will completely fail within the next five years. So right now, they've got a unit... That's designed to construct it, but it's gro growing out of it, basically, more and more, and it's not going to last yeah. much longer. Interesting. 
Expansion usually takes place through the form of several solid rod-like structures protruding from the original body before settling into a liquid state consistent with the rest of the SCP. Although that's kind of, of a SCP- cool. That's a cool visual. I like that. I'm just imagining like this viscous slime thing, and, and then you hear that whoosh, and all these crystals shoot out, and then they kind of turn back into well, liquid you can, and gloop down. You can see what I kind of meant there if you look at the image. Yeah, like the pipes coming out. Yeah, I do see it indeed. It's pretty cool. Although sections of the SCP's mass retain the ability to expand and change shape for several hours after being severed from the original body, they gradually become inert once those hours have passed. The SCP has on multiple occasions demonstrated the capability to create autonomous entities using portions of its own mass as a base. These entities are to be referred to as instances of Dash 1. Instances of Dash 1, while largely lacking the shape-changing expansion capabilities of the main SCP, do not become inert when separated from the SCP in the way other sections separated from it do. This is very interesting. So this implies, maybe maybe it's doing this on instinct, but it kind of implies at least some low level of intelligence to want to create autonomous like forms and have them mm. do tasks for it. It's kind of neat. Instances of Dash 1 are specialized for a wide range of purposes, most of which center around breaching the SCP's containment. While instances of Dash 1 obey the initial purposes given to them by the SCP without exception, they do not appear capable of communicating with it after the creation. Unlike SCP-3179, which is fully recognisable as a metallic entity, instances of Dash 1 can simulate an exterior organic appearance. Ooh. The SCP- <laughs> so, like, the, 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 the main thing is just, like, metal, but these things can, like, look like other things. Mm. Uh, do you think they've ever tried anything fucked up, like, looking like a, one of the doctor's kids to, like, get him to open up the unit? <laughs> It kind of reminds me of that, uh, at the risk of sounding like a Reddit tool. Do you, have you ever seen that, like, Rick and Morty episode where the, the gal's, like, stuck in the ship and it's, like, projecting horrible fucked up stuff to get people to not mess with the ship? Like, the cop's no. dead son and stuff? <laughs> I'll have to find that scene and show it to you. It's very bizarre. I see. The SCP is sapient and highly intelligent, capable of altering and refining its tactics over time. Evidence suggests that it is also either hostile or uncaring towards human life, causing significant amounts of damage and casualties during its attempts at breaching containment. See Denim-2. This guy should team up with the lizard. We should give him a name, like Metal Slimy or Metal Boy. He's the seed. The seed. The seed of sin, of evil. <laughs> Addendum-1. History. Records suggest oh, that the shit. SCP is an extraterrestrial entity which first arrived on Earth near the English village of Dellington in the year 1909 following a meteor shower. Shortly after said arrival, it came to the possession of members of the Cogwork Orthodoxy. The SCP was significantly smaller than its current size at this point, but its ability to efficiently expand and create specialised entities convinced the members that retrieved it that it was of relevance towards their faith. Writings from brother inventor Warranty Silas, one of the individuals that discovered the SCP, indicate that it was briefly thought of as the seed of the Mechain, an entity that would one day expand to such a degree to be the offspring of their faith's deity. So this is an alien unit, but they've kind of, because it's metal, have decided that it's a part of the Broken God Church. They or did, maybe it is yeah. a part of the Broken God Church. Who knows? I, I think that's interesting about these religious SCP groups is sometimes they have something that really is their religion, but there are genuinely also times in... And I think this is a result of the canon not existing. There's not a consistent canon. It's like sometimes they are exactly right, but sometimes they really do just mistake something else for things from their religion, which is kind of cool to me. I kind of like that sort of... I don't know if I'd call it realism or not, um, but like that, that that idea that they are both sometimes right, but also sometimes make mistakes, and it kind of mm. keeps you guessing: Are they right about their faith? Is their faith a sham? Who knows? So as the SCP grew, it displayed significant hostility towards the individuals caring for it, causing several casualties. This, along with its lack of reaction towards any displays of faith or Cogwork Orthodoxy scripture, convinced religious officials that it was of no relation towards their faith, as oh, efforts to utilize it. Rip. Yeah. As efforts to utilize it for their own purposes also failed, they then decided to enact containment procedures using a unit of their own design. As the containment unit had mostly been breached by the SCP by the year 2816, the Cogwork Orthodoxy then contacted the Foundation, informing them of the SCP's location, requesting they take over containment efforts. Interesting. They're working together. Do you think the SCP... I feel like the, the, the Foundation could have made a trade. Like, you want us to take this thing off your hand and give us this other thing we know you have. Would have been kind but of then be like, okay, we'll just let it go then. 
Oh, and then they're like, wait, no, never mind, we'll take it. I was joking. Right, so we have a, a second addendum now. Attempted containment uh, breaches. The following is a record of attempts by the SCP to breach containment, whether through changing the shape of its maths or by reducing instances of Dash 1. Why don't you read this bit? Sorry, I, I I keep wanting to like banner with you, but I can't hear you. Like all I hear is silence, and then you read this. Like I didn't even hear you read any of the addendum parts. It's so weird. I don't know why you keep cutting out oh. for me. Especially because we like literally just spent an hour making fun of Darman videos, and there was no problems. Are you using OBS right now? No. Instead of Audacity, that's so weird. I don't know why it's lagging now. Sorry, I don't want to take up too much of the video with that. It's just bothering me for some reason. Okay, <clears throat> date uh, December twenty eighth, twenty sixteen. SCP-3179 attempts to grow leg structures on its underside, presumably for the purposes of ambulation away from the containment zone. Structures are severed before they can be fully actualized. January 11th, 2017. SCP-3179 attempts to grow massive numbers of propeller structures on the top side of its body, presumably an attempt in an attempt to attain flight and escape the containment zone. Structures are severed before they can be fully actualized. March 4th, 2017. Instances of the SCP or SCP-3179-1 are produced, taking the form of several flying drones that attempt to fly away from the containment zone. All instances of Dash-1 are shot down and recovered. Construction of the containment bunker was completed following this breach attempt. April 12, 2017. SCP-3179 produces several sound-emitting structures within its own mass, using them to speak in the voices of several members of MTF Zeta-10. Voices claim that they have become trapped in the SCP, requesting that the supervising personnel enter it to retrieve them. Vocalization continues for an hour before ceasing. So that's kind of similar to the idea I had with like using the kids of the doctors. Mm. Uh, the day right after that, April 13th, 2017. Using still existing sound emitting structures, the SCP screams in the voices of several members of MTF Zeta 10, claiming that the SCP is killing them and requesting immediate assistance. Vocalization continues for 24 hours before ceasing. Supervising personnel admit to significant stress caused by this breach attempt. I wonder if one of these written off as a breach attempt really did happen or not. <laughs> Uh, and it, it, April 19th, 2017, an instance of, S, of the SCP-1 is produced, taking the form of a crude humanoid automaton that speaks in the voice of MTF Zeta-10-3. Instance claims to be MTF Zeta-10-3 and requests it be released from the containment zone. Instance of SCP-1 is terminated by supervising personnel. I think that really was the guy then. Uh, April 20th, 2017, an instance of SCP-1 is produced, taking the form of a highly advanced mechanical automaton, identical in exterior appearance to MTF Zeta-10-3. Instance claims to be MTF Zeta-10-3 and requests release from the containment zone, also claiming that the individual it is impersonating is himself an imposter created by SCP-3179. Instance is terminated. Wait, what? Hmm? Oh, oh, I see. I got confused. So so he's saying the one on the outside is the imposter. Yeah. Oh, that's totally how it escaped. Or maybe not. I don't know. This is very interesting. I'm, I, I, this one's already got me much more invested. Uh, this is April, May. Okay, May 11th, 2017. MTF Zeta-10-4 is found sabotaging several systems involved in 3179's containment. After restraining Zeta-10-4, tests show that al although his epidermis, eyes, and tongue remain organic, his interior mass has, has been replaced with mechanical systems. Analysis of Zeta-10-4's contact with 3179 in the days preceding this breach attempt suggests that his body was infiltrated by numerous tiny instances of 3179-1, which converted him into an additional 3179-1 instance while he was asleep excuse me all instances of 3179-1 there's a lot of fucking numbers in these logs are terminated and decontamination <laughs> procedures are enacted i know you didn't write them to be read aloud but like hot damn that's why i just say dash one uh, yeah May 12, 2017. Analysis of all personnel assigned to the SCP reveal that several research personnel have been converted into instances of SCP-1. These instances are terminated. It is currently unknown how these personnel, who did not come into contact with the SCP, were converted. That makes you wonder if the, like, the original ones really were those people. Addendum 3179-3. Oh, sorry, my nose is so stuffy. Oh, or do you want to read this now? Yeah, sure, I'll do this bit. On 6-02-2017... Wait, no, that's... Yeah, that's fine. Uh, the SCP created and dispersed numerous metal tablets through its containment area. All tablets bore the following text. Humans must obey the rulings of God. Gods. Pending. The Mechane is a god. Pending. The Mechane is a powerful entity of steel and industry. Pending. I am a powerful entity of steel and industry. 
Bending, therefore I am the Mechane. Bending, therefore I am a god. Bending, therefore you will release me. Awaiting response. Oh, he capitalized me. It's interesting, he didn't capitalize God, but he capitalized me. Very interesting. But this decision regarding responding to this communication is pending. I really like this one. I feel my only complaint is I wish you had gone a little bit more into detail with the stories of like what's going on with these people in the invasion. But honestly, I feel like this one had much more of a coherent theme going on. Uh, some very interesting questions. And I love that we know from the photograph that it's already started. It was like, the, or never mind. Sorry. The photograph was a breach while getting it to the, uh, to the, Never mind. I thought that was like after the fact. I'm dumb. But still, I really like this one. Um, I don't know why it has so few upvotes. I'm going to toss this one. I, I'm going to give this one a probably 9 out of 10. Pretty good. Good work. You've appeased right, me, employee. Thank you, sir. What do you think looking back on it? I'm always interested to hear how you feel looking I really, at your old SCPs. I still really like this one. I, I think this is like one of the only things I've written for like Broken God stuff. This is like, and I feel like, this is like what? Hmm. I feel like this is. I've, I think this is one of the only things I've written for Broken God. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, I, I'm really happy with it. Like I thought, like I had a cool angle on it, where it's like this, this unrelated alien thing comes in and like gets convinced that it's <laughs> the Broken God. Yeah, I thought that was a really creative way to put it. It's like they thought it was part of the Broken God. They realized it wasn't, but because it was influenced by them, now it thinks it's a god and it's trying to act like one. I think that's a really creative, subtle narrative you strung throughout the article. And if and if there was just a little bit more detail, I feel like this could be a ten out of ten or higher. But it just it feels like there's an itch that wants to be scratched. But I still feel like you did a good job setting up what you tried to, and it was fun to read or have read to me for the most part, anyway. Okay. All right, so we've well, got one more for today. Yeah, so this one was kind of inevitable. We have to read this one. Is it uh, 5,000? This, this one is SCP-3166. Why does that number sound have, familiar? It's called You Have No Idea How Alone You Are, Garfield. Wait a minute, didn't we watch the Minecraft version of this? <laughs> yeah, don't worry, there's not much in common. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just as a heads up... I know what this one is already, I think, because we saw the Minecraft version of it, at which point Tan told me all the things that got wrong, which kind of by proxy told me what this is. But it's still going to be fun to revisit because it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, this is one of my more popular ones. I don't know why. <laughs> but... Yeah, because everyone thinks it's Gorefield when it's not. It came up before Garf Gorefield. Yeah, so. I know. I, we, we, we've discussed this before. <laughs> If you ever want to piss Tan Honey off, just talk about how he, you're so glad he made Gorefield, and then make fan art, call it SCP-3166, and then just make a Gorefield art, and he will kill you. I, let's get into it. Item number SCP-3166. <laughs> Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. The Garfield media franchise is to remain active and successful for as long as feasibly possible. Funding is to be provided to any Garfield Media Ventures via Foundation Front Companies present in the comic and film industries. Agents embedded within Paws Incorporated, sole owner of the rights to Garfield, and Andrews McNeil Syndication, primary distributors of the Garfield comic strip, are to place targeted mimetic agents in outgoing comic strips, encouraging the retention of a sizable Garfield fan base and discouraging Jim Davis from discontinuing Garfield. Oh my god, Jim Davis is the manga artist that doesn't want to make the Garfield anymore. He's been doing it for how many years? <laughs> Agents like 30 have years? How long has Garfield been going on? Too long. Let me look that up. How long has Garfield been around? Uh, 40 years old! Too old. Actually, it's 42 now. Sorry. Jesus. Agent... Agents to monitor individuals at significant risk of attack from SCP-3166. In the event of an SCP manifestation, agents are to use supplies frozen lasagna to lure the SCP away from its target and dispatch it once out of public view. All witnesses are then to be administered amnestics as appropriate for their level of exposure. <laughs> Description. So people have I have had comments in the past to the to the effect that the first line of the special containment procedures is a very good hook. Yeah, I think I think what makes people think this might be Gorefield is it's an entity that's stopping people if Garfield stops being popular that's lured away with lasagna. So they forget that it's humanoid and all that, and they're just like, oh, Gorefield. But it's not. Hmm. So description. SCP-3166 is a 2.1 meter tall humanoid entity, presumed pataphysical in nature. 
known to manifest during periods when the Garfield media franchise is performing pearl early in terms of public reception. What is so pataphysical? Pat- so that is something that comes up around this time in SCP. It basically is like f- fiction becoming reality is how I use it here. Okay, so it's not a real science term. It's like an SCP thing. I think it was like taken from some kind of philosophical uh, term. Right. But yeah, basically for this it means so a basically thing it's that becoming, it's that stand real. from JoJo Part Six. Basically. Okay, I it, got you. It's when like fiction and reality starts getting blurred. It's just, like, that's part of physics. This uh, shit ain't do... Mickey. The exterior layer of the SCP's body resembles a crudely made costume of the character Garfield, which field inspe- inspection has shown to be composed of legitimate cat fur. However, analysis of okay, the SCP this composite... this might be this this might be probably why people think it's Gorefield all the time. Actually, however, analysis of the SCP's composition in the field has shown that its interior mass is composed entirely out of pasta, specifically lasagna. I actually I know I keep talking about this Tim, but I want to pause this because I think you've inadvertently stumbled upon a cultural phenomenon that's existed for tens of thousands of years. Where mm-hmm. so this is you you're angry that this has become Gorefield, right? Uh, throughout history, if you look at different like legends and mythologies, a lot of times civilizations will see similarities between mythologies and then basically like mash up their gods and legends to make it fit. <laughs> and and I, I'm being dead serious. And I think because this came out, it's like humanoid. Um, it's a humanoid thing that has a Garfield costume that's made of cat fur and it attacks people unless it's fed lasagna. And then I know it came before Gorefield, but Gorefield didn't come long after because they're similar enough. I feel like they were culturally mashed so that a lot of people's understanding of this SCP is Gorefield because there was sort of like a culture, a culture mashing because they had enough similarities for them to put them together as one thing. And I think that, and that's something that's happened throughout history for millennia, but it's just so funny because it usually, in in the context of history, we see it happen with mythologies or like origin stories for civilizations, but this happened with a fucking like internet fanfic article with another internet fanfiction. They kind of became synonymous with one another. (laughs) It's so (laughs) bizarre to me, but kind of funny too. Right. So upon the criteria for its manifestation being met, the SCP will appear in the vicinity of a suitable individual, hereafter referred to as the target, <coughs> and move towards the location. No. Known targets of the SCP have included individuals prominently involved in rival media to the Garfield franchise. What counts as rival media to Garfield? Every piece of media? Scooby Dooby Doo! <laughs> Scooby Doo Son. Do you think there's another SCP that defends Scooby-Doo and keeps it popular, like a guy in a Scooby costume? And he's like, so, we meet again, 3166. <laughs> Individuals formerly involved in the production of the Garfield comic strip. Individuals no. involved in parodies of the Garfield franchise. <laughs> no, Tan, that, it, by extension, that involves you with this article. <laughs> Vocal critics of the Garfield franchise. Oh, Garfield fuck. creator Jim Davis. No, jim son. Doesn't that actively hinder its goal of keeping Garfield going? So the footnote it says there, This has only occurred on occasions where the negative reception Garfield was receiving could be traced back to Mr. Davis' management of the franchise. Oh, of course. Upon reaching its target, the SCP will attempt to inflict bodily harm upon them through a mixture of blunt force using nearby objects and force feeding of lasagna, obtained through self-disembowelment. Uh. During this process, the SCP were vocalized by meowing, purring, and screeching in the manner of an extremely agitated cat. Lasagna outside of the SCP's mass has proven to be an effective form of bait for the entity, as upon seeing it, the SCP will abandon its original goal and instead attempt to incorporate the pasta into itself. So so what's interesting about me is this is a very bizarre and mysterious anomaly. It works in mysterious ways, right? And it has special rules. But Mm. Garfield is, even though it's 42 years old, it's a modern concept. So what I like to imagine in cases like this where an SCP hinges around an idea... Um, is I like to imagine that this once was its ancient an ancient entity of its own, right? But then it like became a fan of Garfield, so now its sole priority is making sure Garfield is well liked because it's a fan of Garfield. Mm-hmm. Like it used to just right. be some other spooky thing, but now it's entirely synonymous with Garfield. Well, let's find out more. The SCP yeah, first sorry, manifested. Head, it first manifested on ten twenty three nineteen eighty nine within the Chicago offices of United Media, who were the publishers of the Garfield comic strip at the time. Upon manifestation, the SCP wandered around the offices in a confused and distressed manner before indiscriminately assaulting any individuals present after security attempted to apprehend it. It de-manifested several minutes, 20 minutes later. Foundation agents responding to the situation distributed amnestics as appropriate. 
Over the course of the following week, similar manifestations took place at a number of United Media offices around the country, and the, excuse me, ending on 10-29-1989. Following that date, the SCP altered its behaviour to its current form. See the week of Garfield comic strips beginning on 10-23-1989 in supplementary document 3166-1 for additional context on pataphysical awakening. Initially, individuals involved with production of Garfield comic strips claimed to have no memory of working on that week's strips. Oh, strip I work. know this strip. Is Are you implying that it was born from that comic strip? Yeah, so in the context... This doesn't feel like my home. Yeah. So in the context of like the SCP, this, this week of comics is Garfield becoming aware that he is a fictional character. Oh, that's kind of cool. So then he comes out. So to make sure that Garfield continues to exist, he must Th- keep. That's the comic arguably strip better going. than my. That's arguably better than my head cannon. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So the thing is, like when he comes out of the comic strips, like do stuff like his character mm-hmm. traits and his like character appearance get all mashed up, which is why he's a cat full of lasagna. Sorry, you completely cut out. What'd you say after when he comes out of the comic strip? So when he comes out of the comic strip, because he's like a fictional character, and it's a little part of physical shit. So like his physically, his character traits manifest like physically as well. Like so, he's a, a cat filled with lasagna. Well, interestingly enough, on one, I guess that explains why the SCP wants to make Garfield good because that keeps him existing without him manifesting badly. But in theory, although he'll manifest if it goes badly, if it were to end, then he would end as well, right? Yeah, he doesn't want it to end. Yeah. He would go to Jack's The Big Empty on his roleplay thing. Mm. Oh my god, this thing in The Big Empty. <laughs> oh no. Addendum 3166-1. Right. Using tissue samples taken by Agent Muller during the SCP's most recent manifestation, genetic analysis of the meat present within the lasagna has shown it to be genetically identical to Garfield creator Jim Davis. The implications... There's, of what is with... Here. What is fucking with series four and their genetics are actually identical to other thing it's starting to get that's not a fucking genetics work because your cells are constantly like multiplying and changing and reading your dna and shit so if you have dna of a thing you would just become that thing eventually that doesn't make sense i hate this about series four it's human meat is the implication oh oh i get it never mind sorry learn to read you fucking idiot Okay, but you can't blame me because I've seen the trope the other way so many times now in Series 4, and I'm starting to hate it. <laughs> a lot. You've seen it once. No, twice. It came up twice now. And I what thought was this the was time? the third time, so it was setting me off. The first time we saw it was... Uh, so the so the second time we saw it was with, with Jessica Lambert. Wait, 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 wait and, what was the first time? You skipped. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember. Give me a second. The first time it was with... Um, Oh yeah, the hair by Datto thing on the Thesherm one. That was sweet, but I still was like, wait, how does the rabbit have the genes of the human it came from? Remember? And I was like, does that mean when it mates with rabbits, it makes... Like, the first time I was like, oh, that's quirky, but kind of funny. And it makes sense because it grew from them. And then there was the weird Jessica Lambert pig thing. And then I thought this was a third time, and it was, like, starting to piss me off. However, during surveillance of Mr. Davis by containment teams, he has complained of severe, severe mosquito bites in the mites on a number of occasions immediately preceding the SCP's manifestation. Ugh. To manifest, Garfield must take his creator's flesh. <laughs> so creepy. This is very, very Mondays. interesting. I hate Mondays. Something that so I like this I'm... one a lot. Oh, sorry, go ahead, what were you saying? I was going to say that whenever people like make anything about the this SCP, they leave out the, the, the backstory, which is like the most important part when I was writing it. It's like I think the backstory is genuinely interesting because you involved it with a real comic that was like supposedly yeah. eerie at the time. Uh, and what I like about this one is even though it's on the short side, I feel like at least, I, you've done good narrative ones before, but out of the examples you showed today, I think this one had the strongest narrative around it, because it had a backstory, it had a reason, it wants to perpetuate its own existence, so obviously it does anything it can to make sure the Garfield series keeps going. Um, so all it's all the things it's doing are motivated by a goal rather than it just being a crazy ghost thing we don't understand. Uh, and it's in, it's an interesting visual in a time where it existed before Gorefield. This wasn't really something that like people had thought about, like a a beloved kids franchise. I guess people have done like beloved kids franchise mm. gone evil, but like in in sort of such a visceral, gory esque way. Um, I really like this one. I want to give it an eleven out of ten. Nice. I, I finally and broke. The you 10. can tell I've read it because I went to upvote it and it was like trying to re-rate this content. And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> You see, I suddenly yeah. don't complain about 11 out of 10 when I'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! That's true. I like this one a lot. I think this is one of your better works, Tan. Thank and you. And you know what? 
I'm gonna be mm. honest. This is not to shit on Bobble, but I think this is better than Bobble and deserves more upvotes than Bobble. I would probably agree with you there. But Bobble yeah. is old and he's like he's like Bobble's a classic, so it's an I think I think the popular. only reason this one doesn't have more votes than it should is because there's no image. If you had like a nice image of the thing in the costume, like stalking around in the shadows, this would have like two thousand upvotes. That's what I've learned from SCPs. You get a lot more attention from articles with fancy pictures and formats. Hmm. Uh, and I but feel I'm like that's at... skyrocketing you. Yeah, I'm not good at finding like ones that I'm allowed to use because like right. And and, I, stuff. and I personally don't think you have to or should make yourself if you don't want to. But I just think it's a shame because I know if this had an image, it would be way more popular than it is. But because it doesn't, it's kind of gotten glossed over more than I think it deserves to be. But yeah, that was good. Right. So shall we jump into the comments for last episode? Yes. Let me open the video real quick. Let me go to discovering SCP uh, and. I've, I've like started to just assume I'm in charge of picking the comments to read, so I already picked some out, but if you want to do them, you can, of course, as well. Please, go ahead. All right. So first, from Banker Paul, we have, holy shit, I love the Sherm's ideas for a studio thing. I told you Six I picked minutes ago, you just made... I know, I know, I was about to say, I love how I told you I picked them out, but this one was brand new. <laughs> it came out you just made ago. it, Banker Paul. <laughs> You can now track I, when we're recording by the, by the picked, six minutes ago. <laughs> I picked up the rest of them, but I saw this and I was like, well, that fits. Um, then from yeah, Adrian very Rutherford. From the yeah, I'm, I hope that goes well. I really want to see that. Adrian Rutherford wrote, can't wait for more GOI articles and more tales. As for SCPs, I'll recommend 2273, Alexis Belitrov, because it's Broken Masquerade and kind of sad. Also, be jaunty and proud, but you spell jaunty. Was that skipper I heard coming die. in at the end though? <laughs> Yeah, you already read Candy Queen's comment. Uh, the next one, hold on, I looked this up the other day because I didn't want to pronounce it wrong, but I have to look it up again because I forgot. Uh, Chinese to English. And then this next one's pronounced Yang Shishin. I tried really hard to say that right. Uh, and they said, I'm currently in the process of binging through all of your podcasts, but I'm just going to comment on the latest video saying that you guys have got me wanting to write an SCP. In fact, I'm writing one right now as I'm typing this comment. Anyway, I'm just going get, to go get back to binging the hours of content that I still haven't consumed on this channel. See ya! Hope well, you uh, yeah, I'm very glad you enjoyed it. And this is something I've been seeing a lot that's very heartwarming. A lot of people are like, I want to write an SCP because you guys, and that's very sweet. Uh, one thing I want to point out, though... Um, is some some people, and I'm not saying you, you guys did anything wrong. We're not mad at you, but like they're DMing us saying like, what do you do? You guys want me to write about? And I want to say honestly, write what you guys want to write about, not what you think we'll like or or want to see. Uh, the best work you, you make is going to come from things you're interested in and put the time in. That's something that you think we will specifically like. But I am very happy that you guys uh, feel a desire to contribute and want to make things and be creative. That's amazing. Chase that. I think that's really important. Uh, but, you know, don't, like, just make stuff because you, you want to impress us or something. Make stuff because you enjoy it. Um, and then we've got... Oh, sorry. Any comments on that, Tan? I just kind of went on a little rant there. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, though. Um, write what yeah. makes you happy. Killer One Gamer I'm One says, Dado. <laughs> Killer One Gamer one says, Dado, a creature, nothing against them if they're not human, that can do anomalous things, but they're so kind they decided not only to help the children, but to give the parent Amazon Prime. Nice. Wow. Uh, I really want to read Hunter Spadafora comments, because we didn't last week, but it's really freaking long, so I'm just going to read a couple of the comments on it, if that's all right. Yeah, you're going to take care of some of the Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to read a few of the things he said. Uh, and he did say the password, too. So he said... Of course, of course. Uh, DSCP story slash lore? Forget about it. Above as a joke is a reference to the Ad Astra per Aspera canons forget about it subsection. The canon has no relation to Thesherm. I just wanted to make the joke. Nice, nice. Thank you so much. Uh, what were you saying? I was saying thank you so much. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I was expecting SCP-3086 to actually just be the audio recorded for it with no reading from Tanhoney, Donnell, or Thesherm themselves. That wouldn't really be us making a podcast anymore. <laughs> Yeah, just that's be leeching just, oh, T-Sherm's content. We are we are on the border of making content here. We can't go any further. Yeah, yeah. If we just started not even saying things, we just played audio SCPs for our podcast, <laughs> just stealing. 
I wasn't expecting Tanhony to actually read it since the audio recording is supposed to be a major slash main part of the SCP. Uh, then the gym look. I'm surprised no one noticed the D class's number was D3086 since the previous SCP read was D3086. Uh, oh, SCP-3086. Uh. I was hoping to get an answer from Thesherm to see if there was a connection or if it was a coincidence. Very interesting. I did not catch that. And then I'll read one from the last thing. The headers with the disruption class and risk class pe- parts are the anomaly classification system, ACS headings. There's an in-universe explanation page and a writer out-of-universe explanation page, but Thesherm explains it very well. All right. Thank you for your comments, Hunter. Sorry we didn't read them all, but just keeping it moving. Any thoughts, Tan? Um... I also apologize to Hunter that we had to abridge you. Anything else? Uh, I like SCP. We need a new password for this episode. Oh, what's our new password before we continue the comment reading? Read a full space. That's not a password. It is. I just okay. said it. Okay. It's you, not. Now you guys got to say that in the comments. Like, you're so shameless. Tanhony is looking at the low view counts on the A Thrill Space videos and punching the air right now. Oh man! All I'm right. Bo- uh, down- <laughs> I about to say I, was, I meant air boxing. I said fist boxing. Like it's another kind. <laughs> fist box. <laughs> Dino Tail said, "Hey Tanhony and Grammar Nazi Darnell. One, my SCP recommendations are three two four one, the SS Summerfield, SCP three eight three four, fossil records, and SCP three zero two one. Q equals." My theme recommendation is Lord Blackwood. Bruh, three. We'll I actually want to... Yeah, what's Lord Blackwood? You'll find out. Oh, sounds like a fucking... Sounds like Strahd's alter ego from D&D. Uh, three. <laughs> Bruh, I actually want to use those Dado banana pills to pull a epic prank on my friend. What, killing them? He'll die. Four. This is the second person in the comments that misspelled Jaunty somehow. Jaunty. Which is fitting because he called me a grammar Nazi, so touche. Five, my comment was skipped. How dare you? You know what I'm going to do. Absolutely nothing. Six, you know, I suddenly think Tanoni's not that bad anymore. Darnell, on the other hand. And then he stops there. Yeah. Said what he needs to. All right. What'd you say? Said what he needs to. Yeah, okay, I'll kill you. Uh, Honestick says, I needed this kind of happiness in my life after the news I got this week. Oh, I, I don't know what that is, but I hope you're doing all right, bud. Hmm. I'm a sucker for Datto. I'm a sucker for the rare happy SCP. And you guys in Thesherm are my favorite SCPU pod tube casters. Uh, aw. <laughs> Shucks, honestic. 3355 would be a good choice if you want to do another happy one, especially at this time of year. Also, Jaunty. Jaunty. Uh, Daniel's, or sorry, Quaker Button Nose says, You finally read something else on the bingo card! Ah! I'm so happy you finally got to Datto! Hair Growth is one of my favorite Datto SCPs too! And then in parentheses, See, Darnell? Tanhoney knows how to do an Eastern U- European accent, and he doesn't <laughs> use it to make fun of Boris, which I had many contradictions to in the replies. I was not happy with that. Sherm's ideas for that ethical short film sound really, really cool. I definitely don't have similarly ambitious ideas based around making fun of ethical instead of celebrating it. Nervous, sweating. Oh, and I love the Photoshop chinchilla. Yeah, I think Lon Lang photoshopped the chinchilla because he couldn't find any non-copyrighted ones. So he took like a <laughs> mouse and a rabbit and photoshopped them together if you saw that. <laughs> Lon Lang so put more effort into that image than we did into our podcast. It genuinely, sometimes I, I worry that our editors put... I mean, not that, like, Tanani and I genuinely try to obviously record and do the best content we can, but sometimes it does feel like our editors put in more effort than us, and I feel so bad. They're just little employees. <laughs> hey, sorry, don't like, say hey, that, I'm sorry, guys, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I'm, doing it. I'm sorry. They're going to go sorry. start their own design firm and run us out of business on YouTube. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Zack Games says, I was wondering if you could cover MC and D at some point. They're one of my favorite GOIs. Dan? Stick around. Soon. TM. All right. And then lastly, from Anomalous Writer, we have props to Lon Lang Lin for the Photoshop of the chinchilla. Uh, P.S. Wait until Darnell hears about Dado Asmer Tale. ASMR Tale. Password <laughs> Jaunty. I don't know spelling. Well, at least you spelled it right, so you're good. Yeah, you're the only one who spelled it right. Yeah, aside from Honestick, pretty much. Oh, that was fun. All right. Yeah. Uh, any closing comments, Tan? I just want to say... Um, we're now on episode... 43. 43. And I want to mm-hmm. say, I really appreciate you guys sticking around. And uh, it, no matter how you came to find us, whether it was through the Sumerian interview or through like my Twitter or Reddit, I really do appreciate you all. 
And that's yes. why <laughs> you must now die. No, I was about to say my piece about how much I love the audience. Damn oh, it. please go on. Please go on before. No, before you ruined it. You already spoiled that we're going to kill them off. Now it's just going to come oh. off as contrite. Also, unintentionally, I didn't even realize the Shroom's thing is Site 42, and he was on episode 42 of the podcast, which worked out so oh, well. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I did accidentally call it Site 41 at the start. So <laughs> The funny thing is, because you guys kept cutting out for me in the recording, or, or you did anyway, I thought he said 41 was the right one, even though I thought it was 42. So I think I... I said 41 as well. Uh, and I think you thought I was making fun of you, and I just laughed along because I got confused. <laughs> but right in the show, I'm like, he's <laughs> like when Murray and the Joker. Yeah. The Shroom is an amazing. 41. He's amazing. He makes great stuff. I hope you guys, if you don't already, are checking out his content. I'm really excited to see what he does with that short film idea. He was spectacular to have on. All of our guests have been, honestly. I'm genuinely surprised with how much... Like, I'm not saying anything, but with how much drama here in the SCP community, I'm surprised every guest we've had on has been so awesome and, like, chill and great. And it's been a lot of fun. And we hope to continue that tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, That's why next episode yeah. we will have... I'm announcing this now. Not even Darnell knows about this. The Christmas special! That's Uh-oh. right. A special Christmas-themed episode for Chris. I haven't decided whether I'm going to post it early on Christmas Day or on Boxing Day, but that depends on when you bother to record. Christmas. Well, the thing is, Christmas. the thing is, the thing is, if we post it on Christmas, we need something else for Saturday. Mm. Jingle, well, mm. jingle bells. Donnell smells. Go I'll and get you. an egg. I'll put Tanhony in the gutter and I'll stomp all over his parade. Hey. Um, but yeah, yeah. Bye. What are you going to do about it, employee? Anyway, this Christmas, I'd like to thank Darman. Uh, no. Uh, go read Aetheral Space. Go check out Good Morning Poon Poon. I know there's still only three episodes out. Uh, it's a limited series podcast, so there's already not a schedule, but my co-hosts have been very busy with stuff, and things have been chaotic. But uh, we're supposed to record. Uh, by the time this episode goes up, that day I'm going to be running a D&D game for the first time in forever, and then right after I'm supposed to record. So hopefully we'll get up episode four soonish. Uh, and I think there's only going to be five or six episodes, Max. So I hope you guys have been listening to that. And obviously, go read Oyasmi Poon Poon. It's freaking amazing. I was talking to some people about it on the server earlier. Um, what else is going on? Oh, yeah. Uh, if you haven't figured out our new things every week, I think I mentioned announcements. Every Tuesday, Tanhony's releasing a shitpost video. And every Thursday at 5 p.m., for as long as I can anyway, I'm going to be trying to do a gaming stream. Uh, and that includes today, after this recording. Streamer. Um, yes, Tanhony will show up whenever he can for however long he can, but because of his work schedule and time zones, he usually pro- he won't be in this stream for very long today, and I don't know how many streams he'll be in or be in for a significant amount of time, but if you want to see some games, you know, tune in. Anything else? They said be games? there or be square, and I wasn't there. Yeah, it was fucked up. You are the square. Well, uh, if everything's That's done, I suppose me? we should... <laughs> Finish up this podcast thing and toss it to our editor so we can watch some more Darman videos. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for listening. This is my real voice. What I did before was a fake yes. one I did for the podcast. Merry Christmas. Have happy holidays for whatever you celebrate as well, of course. Take care of yourselves. Stay healthy. Thank Don't you die. so much. I'm so happy. Goodbye. Mm. Goodbye. Bye. Well. <laughs>